Adnan, good to see you again. Alan, great to see you and welcome to Siemens Energy. Great to be here. Yes, long time not seen. I know. You know our Siemens Energy portfolio as a leading energy technology company with yeah. the power generation and also the transmission and also with the transformation of industry. Today we are here at the Distributor Conference, which is the leading transmission and distribution automation digitalization conference. And we have a strong focus on digital grid and the associated service with that. Excellent. So, so you've got something to show me. Yes, I've got something to show you. When we talk about the energy transition, especially, which is a huge challenge now at the moment, mm -hmm. it's, it is something where we need to think about the system entirely and also do the thorough planning and, and mature planning. That's basically something we do on the grid systems and grid planning side. I will introduce you to Peter Vogel and let us go over there. Okay, let's do that. So, this is Peter Vogel. Peter. Hello. Hey, Alan Ross, how are you? Nice to meet you. Good to be met. So, when talking about the, the new grid, the grid that needs to be developed, we first need to talk about who, el who is there that participates to the grid. First thing is generation. So traditionally we had very stable generation um, and planable generation. Nowadays we see more and more uh, volatile generation and not necessarily generation which is there where the load is, where it's consumed. So what you ultimately need is an efficient and stable transmission and also power trans uh, distribution. So we are looking these days in bulk um, transmission, in energy corridors, uh, AC and DC. And not necessarily only um, monopole, but also um, multi-terminal and also in the future much more versatile than we have been seen it in the past. Correct. Um, on the consumer side, however, we also see volatile consumers and actually we see also prosumers. So that means um, we cannot have um, uh, assumed planable loads. We see versatile loads. We see loads from new loads from hydrogen, which also um, contribute to energy stability on the one hand in the future. But nowadays, um, we really need to make so, uh, sure that they are planned properly and also that we can ensure for their processes and their processes mean industrial processes. Um, it means also households ensure a sufficient and stable um, power supply. You mentioned prosumers. Uh, yes. It used to be ratepayers moved to consumers. Now they're prosumers. Yes. Describe that. Um, so, for instance, um, if you think about electrification of industry, okay. so certainly um, processes are electrified. So, we, you think about new um, um, uh, conversion of thermal energy into, for example, electric drives, you see okay. heat pumps and so on. Right. But at the same time also you see that industrial consumers are um, partially producing their own energy and injecting it to the grid on bulk um, if they don't need it. Um, you also see it on households, that is what we already experienced in the last 10 years. But also there, um, um, it's interesting to see um, how that um, is to be handled in the future because we need to, to also anticipate that this has a high influence on the, on the grid through the multiple um, layers. So, if, when you do all that chaos on the grid, right, yes. when you've got, it used to be transmission, generation, transmission, distribution. Yes and it was step down, yeah. now it's step everywhere. Yes, exactly. And that's what you're talking about. Exactly. Okay. And we can actually say that the grid is the glue that holds everything together, that really enables yeah. the energy transition. Yeah. Um, and when talking about new players to the grid, you also see that it's non-traditional players now entering, right? I mean, um, uh, a wind farm not necessarily is operated by a traditional utility. It's right, investment right. driven. And so it starts with a solid planning of understanding what are the requirements that you need to make um, and that you need to, to meet to really have an efficient and workable, um, bankable uh, business plan? So that means you want to talk about what is the tech on economical um, feasibility. You want, would like to know what are the requirements from the grid that you need to meet and also maybe you want to anticipate which maybe is coming ahead to not endanger your business case. So that is, that is one aspect which is particularly impo important for investments. But then ultimately once you know um, what type of business, what type of, 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 of application you want to run, um, you also want to make sure that it's sufficiently and stable connected to the grid and you're not risking actually your business case by that influence. So that is where grid analysis and planning and power system studies come into play. Okay. And basically what they do is they make sure that whatever we do with the grid, it's still sufficient, it's still stable and it's, it's um, sufficient also to, to run um, uh, all generation and all consumer side and without a negative impact. So there's chaos up here, there's chaos back yes. here. 
uh, is there any chaos in the transmission or is that just as stable? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, the chaos, chaos is, is, is there, right? Okay. Um, we are, yeah. we are trying at this point in time um, to really um, uh, tailor new technologies okay. to really master this chaos, right? I would not call it necessarily chaos. I mean, it's all of that is getting more versatile. It's getting more, 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 more uh, flexible. That means we need to think about fast reacting stability measures and they also need to anticipate not only the worst in the best case, but also um, um, be efficient in operation, right? So that means um, it's, it's a quite complex task which is at the moment running. Yeah. And I think um, uh, we are well suited there because it, it needs to have a, a lot of thorough um, understanding of all the players that are in the grid. Okay. You need to understand the wind turbines as well as you need to understand the hydrogen. You need to understand industrial consumers, transmission system operators, but also um, private vest, uh, investment cases, right? So it's really uh, a multi-dimensional challenge which you need to run. And ultimately, once you, you have done all that, it all boils down that you also have access to sufficient um, data. So you want also to make sure that you have sufficient um, asset digitalization running and data generation, which can then ultimately, again, give you good data in feed into your simulations into the next level of grid plannings and, and power system developments. So one aspect of Siemens Energy is energy transformation consulting, is yes. helping utilities and others. I assume you help IPP and I assume you help exactly. every, anywhere yes. along here, right? Yes. Yeah. And our customer base is growing and growing. I mean, think about agricultures. Yeah. Agricultures in tradition have nothing to do with an electrical grid, but they also are producing seeds yeah. and need to, to process them and so on. Traditionally, with, with different processes, then maybe they, they would require tomorrow more electrified. They would like to use more renewable energies as well. Yeah. So one of our new customers is an agriculture uh, seed producer. <laughs> Who would have thought that, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, that's, a, that's brilliant. That's excellent. Now, this is a great background information. Peter, thank you so much. Thank you much, Helen. Alan, you mentioned one important point. You said there is chaos on the left side, there is a chaos yes. on the right side. Yeah. And what is happening in the grid? Is there also chaos? Well, this is one of the challenges we have as a society and the utilities, because now there is much more renewables coming in. They are fluctuating. Yeah. And we have also consumers and performers on the right side. And the grid is actually where everybody's talking about. The grid is the key for the transition of the energy. Right. And that's exactly what we're talking about. When we talk about the transition of the energy, and when we talk about transmission and distribution is running at its edge, it's running at the limits because the design of the grid was initially a different one. Yep. And we have to redesign the power system. That's exactly the task we have. And that's exactly something which is a complex task, no doubt on it. There is certain chaos, but you have to break down this chaos in certain levels. If you talk about that the grid is running at its edge, you have to actually have to see also what we can do there. You have equipment there, you have assets there and you want to run these assets, and you want to run this in a way that you make this energy transition happen, that you integrate with renewables, which means that you want to actually use your existing equipment, you want to increase the efficiency because you're running at the edge with the power system. So digitalization is exactly the key for that. With this, you can exactly know what the condition of your primary equipment is, what the condition of the transformer is, what the condition of the GIS is, and if you know exactly what the condition is, you know exactly how you can load it over the next hours and days mm -hmm. also. And that's exactly where asset digitalization is a key enabler for this energy transition. This is something Tariq, our expert for asset digitalization, can explain to us. Okay. Let's go over to Tariq. Great, thank you. So, Alan, this is Tariq, our expert for asset digitalization. Nice Alan, good to meet you. The so expert on digitalization. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about asset digitalization. So we're at a very critical moment in our energy transition, Alan. We know that the grid that we have today is aging. In the US, most of the transmission distribution lines were manufactured and installed in the 1960s, with an estimated lifetime of 60 years. So the grid is aging, it's more fragile, more susceptible to failures. So we need to think not only about expanding that grid adequately, but also optimizing the existing grid because the demand for energy is also increasing at the same time. And it all starts with gaining transparency on an asset level. And this is what we should talk about now. So basically here, we start off with instrumenting primary assets that we have at the field. We really need to understand how those assets are behaving and be ready to take quick action in case we identify any imminent or potential failures for these assets. Because we want to avoid grid interruptions, we want to avoid unplanned outages, and even minimize planned outages as well. 
so we can increase the availability, availability of all these assets, right? So when we talk about this portfolio within Siemens Energy, we always start off talking about monitoring, about gaining that transparency. But it's not only about that transparency, it's about building on top of that with intelligence. So what can we offer with our OEM expertise and everything that we've been seeing while we've been operating in this segment so that we can offer the users and the customers with enough intelligence to avoid these issues that could happen with their power transformers, their switch gears, their circuit breakers as well. So when we talk about scaling up the intelligence of these solutions above monitoring, we start integrating what we call diagnostics so that we can enrich the maintenance side of these assets, right? But it's not only about the maintenance side, it's also about operation, because we know that this demand for energy is increasing and we need to make the most out of what we have already available. So we also talk about simulation for customers that are interested in understanding what are the overloading capabilities in these primary assets. How can they make the most out of what they already have while we adequately plan for the grid expansion. This is what we call simulation, where we work with our digital twins and our thermodynamic models as well to provide our users with the intelligence to adequately take decisions on increasing the load or really understanding what the exact aging estimation is for these assets. And above that, we have a solution that we call self-care, which is where we provide our expertise to our customers to really recommend actions so that they can be very precise in maintaining and operating their assets. So it's not only about receiving warnings and alarms on your mobile phone or on your tablet or even on your central control system. It's also about the customer getting our recommendations on what needs to be done, when it should be done, and also what would happen if they don't take that action immediately. So our goal here is to provide our customers with as much intelligence as we can so that they can make the best decision possible at the right time. These have been uh, monitoring diagnostics is not new. This is where the simulation, the digital twins and the simulation, and I think the first time I saw a digital twin was a substation that the company had something to do with. That's what's brilliant, that's what's different, which allows to this, is that correct? Correct, exactly. So the base of everything that we're building on top of what we know in the market as condition-based monitoring is all the intelligence that we're developing internally called this digital twin based on thermodynamic models of all the primary assets with our OEM expertise. But these solutions are also applicable for any third-party asset. So it's not only strictly applicable to the ones that we manufacture. Okay, all right. So all data coming from all places goes into here and that simulation once runs. So what, what happens in the simulated world, the digital world, mirrors what's happening in the physical world. Exactly. Brilliant. And, and that allows our customers to really simulate that specific scenario before taking action. So in the case of an expansion of a solar plant, for example, or let's say you're taking a unit out of uh, operation because you need to do some maintenance, you can understand how much the other sister unit can take of that load so that you're covered while you're doing maintenance on the unit that you take out. Can you simulate weather events? We are working on simulating weather events. Because that's going to be a, an important factor in the future to be able to Correct. simulate external circumstances and say, if this, then this. Correct. And you bring up a very important po uh, point, Alan, because in the U.S. we know that 83% of grid interruptions since the 2000 until 2021 were actually due to weather events. Right. So it's not only about what we talk as reliability of avoiding these issues, but also how quickly can we return to normal operating conditions if something happens. Reliability, right. keep the lights on, resilience, get them back on. Exactly, <laughs> okay. that is exactly it. Talk to me about self-care, that's an interesting. Yes, and this is really where our expertise lies in developing a solution that can give our customers all of our know-how as OEMs. So what you get with self-care is basically a tailor-made and customized maintenance plan for your asset based on its real health status. So it's not only about having a health index, but it's understanding what are the actions I need to take to guarantee that that asset is safe and reliable and available as well for me. Okay, excellent. You've got a, a, a nice little global chart over there. What are you showing me Correct. on that side? So this is our platform where we allow the customer to use all the intelligence that we provide. And this platform can be available on the cloud, but also on premise if that's the customer's preference. And through here, you can manage all of the notifications regarding your warnings and alarms. You can look at all the real-time data of your install base, no matter what asset it is, all that information is concentrated within your single access. And also, here you would have access to what you just talked about, which is self-care. Understanding the recommended actions, the customized maintenance plans, and all that. Brilliant, I mean, it's the future.
It is definitely, and the future is here now. <laughs> That's a great line. Thank you so Good much. Good to see you, Alan. Thank you. And then thank you so much. Alan, thank you for visiting us and good to see you again. I hope we could help you with the questions you had. It's been brilliant. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> you too.